Hello, this is Thomas K4SWL. If you're new here, I like to do real-time, real-life amateur radio field activation videos. And today I'm at Gorgeous State Park uh, here in Western North Carolina. And I've been on a camping trip here with my buddy Mike. And uh, uh, for the weekend, it's been really nice. Um, gotten some hiking in and uh, just kind of hanging out, taking it easy and taking a break from everything. And it's been really nice. Um, normally, uh, when we go camping, when I go camping with my friends, I, I just do tent camping. But uh, this time we uh, <laughs> splurged for a cabin here at uh, Gorgeous State Park. The cabins are very, very nice. I'll kind of walk out here. It's raining right now. So I'm actually going to do my activation in the uh, cabin, but these cabins are very nice. And um, they have heat, air conditioning, electricity. I mean, really all the comforts of home. Um, there's a bathhouse like right up right up the walk here. It's really cool. Um, and I've set up, um, I've decided to do like a fairly quick activation. I'm not going to do a very long one, I don't think. I think it could take a while to do this activation. I'll explain why. Uh, this is our last day here, so we're starting to pack up and uh, check out times like at noon. we got plenty of time. And um, the uh, I've set up the MC750 for 20 meters on this little hill right here. You can kind of see on this bank, I should say. And it's set up as a 20 meter quarter wave antenna um, with the um, counterpoise lines out here. And the feed line runs all the way through into the um, cabin. And um, I'm just gonna set up in there since it's raining. It's been raining off and on, not super hard rain, but, um, uh, but it's been off and on. And so I just decided to go inside for this and do this. Um, there's one issue with Gorgeous State Park. I was going to say that like this is like one of my very favorite parks I've ever activated because I really do love this park. It's a beautiful park with really, really nice facilities. It's a fairly new state park. Um, in this camping area here, there's like five cabins. There's a bunch of RV parking, or um, RV sites up here, and a lot of tent sites as well. Um, it's actually an extensive park. There's a lot of road here in this park to take you through different sections of it. Multiple waterfalls and things you can see. It's really pretty. A really nice park. There's one issue though as a POTA activator <laughs> and that is there is some horrible power line noise here. Um, you may be able to see it. Let me back up and see if you can see it from here. This camera is not that great uh, with this sort of thing. But uh, there's some high tension power lines running through the site. You may see it at the top of the hill over here. And so far, the two sites I've been to, which are not close to each other uh, here on site uh, at this park, have had really strong arcing noises that are broadband. They're on every single HF band, and they're they're very uh, difficult to work through. And I set up this antenna and I turned on the radio just to make sure the radio had a charge on it. It's the 705 and I, I did charge it up a little bit before I came here and it turns out it has a full battery, but I immediately saw just how strong that noise level is. And it's an arcing noise at about an S5 or S6 level, which is not good. That means it'll be hard for me to copy any weak signals uh, today. And that arcing noise is really a difficult one to defeat. Um, but I don't think I can get away from that here at this park. And I do want to do an activation today. So we're just going to kind of soldier our way through it and see if it'll work. Now, if I, instead of using a vertical antenna, was using a magnetic loop antenna, like my Chameleon F loop or a homebrew uh, 20 meter uh, magnetic loop antenna, then that could mitigate a lot of this noise. Not all of it probably, but it could mitigate a lot of this noise. Verticals are not the best when you get noise like this, but I'm pretty sure if I had to put up my infed half wave, it would even be stronger uh, than using the vertical. So I don't know, it may have made a little bit of difference, but this kind of noise is really, really difficult to escape. So it is, it is sort of what it is. So let's go inside here in the cabin and I'll show you what I've set up. Uh, we've got our 705 here. Let me deploy the, uh, tripod here real quick. I made sure also there wasn't a noise that's inside the uh, little cottage or cabin or whatever, and it's not. There's nothing in here. There are some heaters in here um, as well. It's a little chilly this morning, not much. 
but the uh, heaters were not making uh, any real uh, noise um, on the bands. So let's see here. Let's turn this on. We'll take a look. I've already prepared everything. I went ahead and prepared my logs. Okay, you see that? Let me bring the 705 a little closer so you can see it. That is arcing noise right there. And I know this noise pretty well because um, there's a place that uh, we've stayed in Quebec um, that we're near some high tension power lines as well and it's very, very similar noise. And it is really difficult to escape this. It is so broadband, it really just wipes out the HF bands. And you can see here it's peaking around like S5, a little bit up to S6, maybe down to S4. But this kind of noise, is, this grinding noise is really hard to get away from. Now, since I'm using the 705, I do have a couple of tools that help. They don't eliminate the noise, but they definitely cut down on sort of the listening fatigue of it. And so, um, I gotta remember here, yeah, it's under function. So it does have a noise blanker. We turn this on, it's a little quieter and I can turn on noise reduction too. That helps a bit. Does not actually eliminate it, so it doesn't mean that I'll be able to hear signals underneath that noise, but it makes the audio uh, just a, a little more pleasant for the activator, basically. And um, let's see here. You can just see just how bad that is. All I really need are my 10 contacts. It'll end up being the 10, probably 10 strong contacts here. And um, we'll just make that work. Okay, so I've got my logs written out. I've got hammers running here. I will need to see yesterday when I tried to do an activation, it was actually in Nanahala National Forest. And the reverse beacon network, it picked me up. I got a few people contact me from hammers or from ham alert but it never spotted to the POTA site, even though I'd scheduled it. And it's because that connection from the POTA site to the RBN was not functioning. So it took a while to get that activation done. I didn't film that one. I was just doing handheld portable with my KH-1. Um, and, um, uh, but thankfully John AE5X recognized that um, I had not been spotted on the POTA network. So I was able to give him a, a park number uh, for him to spot me. And I uh, really appreciate it, John. I was able to quickly finish the activation after that. We can just hear how that works. And the DSP is trying to work on the noise level a little bit, but got a good SWR. That's good to see. Okay, let's go in here into the menu, go to the keyer. Start our POTA call, and I'm going to look on. I'm going to look to see if I get spotted automatically. So we'll kind of watch to see if I get spotted. I wonder if it has me signed in, and yes, it does. Good. So we'll wait and see if it pops up here. I'm hoping there'll be some strong signals out today, though. It's a little early for 20 meters. But when I checked earlier, um, just kind of scanning around 40 meters, the it, the signal noise, the noise level was even higher. So um, I decided to just go to 20 meters, even though it's just 9:30 in the morning, really here, which is kind of early for 20 meters. But it is not spotting me yet.
checking. Let's look and see if we've gotten spotted yet. No, still no spot. Okay, so I'll spot myself. Okay, wait. Okay, wait, hang on. Okay, I'm telling everybody to wait just a second. I'm gonna spot myself just so it's spotted out there. Three, two, CW. Here we go. Okay, now I'm spotted. And let me get um, in eight JY in the logs. There we go, okay.
Good morning, Carl. Good morning, Alan and Sophie. <laughs> I wish Hazel was with me right now. something Is that right? Yeah.
5x, I think is who that was. Oh, R-A-L. Sorry about that. Someone's giving me a signal report. Maybe I should have been a little slower, I'm sorry. 
không được phải signals into New York today. there. You can hear Scott because he's a little off frequency. It's way easier to hear people when they're not right on frequency with you, or zero bidding you.
There we go. Get that right.
I just had a problem getting your very first, your prefix there. JMG, sorry. prefix there.
station here alone. Okay. turn this down because I don't want to get anyone else I want to call QRT because uh, Mike and I may go on a little hike and we need to fit this in and get the uh, rest of our stuff packed up before checkout time and all of that so I need to kind of cut it now something um, that I think was really kind of my own uh, revelation <laughs> with doing this particular activation is um, you know I'm all about really simple radios and I really like using uh, you know my smaller really simple radios when I'm out and about but I've got to admit when you have a lot of noise on the band and I'll kind of move this a little bit so I'm not hearing anybody well you know what let me take some photos while I've got this on frequency uh, so I don't forget to do that um, but the um, the thing that um, really stands out to me is when you have a radio, a modern radio with a lot of the bells and whistles, let me take a picture of my logs too, I'm thinking about it, a lot of the bells and whistles, like noise blankers, noise blankers are fairly common, um, but I find that noise blankers on radios like SDRs, like the um, IC705 here, the noise blankers are, are pretty darn capable. And then when you have radios with built-in DSP, when you have a noise like this, like a really pervasive broadband um, arcing noise like this, I um, mean, you can just see it all over the band just and, and hear it. So like, I'll move a little bit off and you can hear this. Now, if I remove the um, noise reduction, it's not too bad. When I move the noise blanker, then you really hear it. And um, that's what it would sound like working stations. Now, it doesn't mean I couldn't do that. But you can tell like it's even kind of overloading the receiver a little bit. I mean, that's a really strong noise. Um, DSP and um, noise blanking doesn't mean that you can hear signals below the noise floor, but it does mean it's a little easier on your ears when you're um, operating. I mean, you can, it's just a lot better on your ears, a lot less fatiguing during a long uh, activation or uh, something like that. Because this noise, this grinding noise, we get on your nerves. So if you have a really simple radio that doesn't have those things, you may not have those tools available. And yesterday when I was doing my activation, I had the TR45 light. The noise level was at least this high, if maybe a S unit even higher than this. And I was able to work through the activation and do it. It wasn't a problem, but I did have to hear that noise. Now, the TR45L actually has really beautiful audio, and so does the 705. Uh, I think there's two of the, I think the TR45 series and the 705 have the best built in audio of any, um, uh, with an internal speaker, I should say. Um, you get the best audio fidelity of an internal speaker than any other radios I have. And I do think that really good audio fidelity helps you overcome some of the nastiness of some kind of QRM like this. And um, yeah, but you just have to, sometimes you, this is what you've got to live with if you want to do your activation. I felt really lucky actually. I mean, this was a fantastic activation and there may have been some weak signals I didn't hear, but I felt like I was able to hear some signals that were just below the noise floor just because of the, um, 
nature of the signal going up and down a little bit, um, they'd peak out. Um, I need to go back and check on this call sign. I'm not, not totally positive I got that one correct. I'm going to go back and listen to this in the video later on. But it's great. This is a great showing all the way from, you know, I've worked everything on the East Coast, lots of New York. Um, seemed like today, pretty good bit of Texas, all the way out to California. Um, so there was, uh, you know, the band was doing fairly well today um, you know, overall. So I'm very pleased with that. I think this was a fun activation and one in the books now. So um, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'll go ahead and put up the um, antenna really quickly. Uh, get this going. I'll take this down. Whoops, let me grab this. I put this here just to remind me. So this is wet, which means that uh, I won't just zip it up in the case in my car when I'm done. I'm going to um, let it dry out in the car and uh, work on it. Sorry I didn't show the antenna deployment. Frankly, I just uh, was working while my buddy Mike was here. He's just been off to the side reading. It's been such a peaceful morning, actually. Had a nice breakfast. Had a um, fantastic day yesterday as well. That we're missing my buddy Monty. Wish he was here. Wish he could have been here for this uh, camping trip. This is hardly camping, to be honest. Um, we may do another one in the fall, and it'll be tent camping. And then I've got my soda camp out in the fall as well. Wish I could make it to the spring W4 soda camp out, but that does the timing never works out for me. We always have other activities going on then. So. I love camping. Normally, normally when you're camping, you're getting away from the noise. Not this time. It's one of the reasons I didn't do a late shift. I was going to plan to do a late shift activation, but 80 meters was horrible. <laughs> that noise was just, it's like the lower the frequency this particular time with this arcing noise, the worse the um, level of QRM was. And so I didn't bother going to 80 meters. Um, and trying it last night, we just took it easy around the campfire and hung out, which was really nice. Good time to catch up with friends, take it easy, no obligations to do anything, and we kind of like that. He and I are both busy family guys, so um, it's nice to have the break uh, to appreciate everything. Okay, so there's this, and we put down the... Um, You can't see this right now, but we'll remove this from the ground, clean it off, make sure everything here is nice and tight. And here are all the components of this. And we'll move down here, get the bag. In. I love this Chell against pack because it's really custom designed for this antenna system. So it works really well. And then my, Bob, uh, my buddy Bob always says I need to put a uh, washcloth in here to kind of like wipe this off when you've had it in kind of muddy ground. And he's right, I should. I never think to do it. So <laughs> don't do it. Um, let me grab the uh, D line here, unplug it. Okay, I'll unplug this from the radio. Now I'll just do a nice figure eight on this. Really big, loose figure eight. So the MC750 MC has been actually a pretty good antenna for this trip. It's a great antenna system. Super easy to deploy, low profile. We had kids running all around here. I would have felt funny having a big wire antenna running through this site because these kids and the neighboring cabins were just running all over the place, which was fine. Um, so this I was able to tuck away off to the side. And put this guy up. And now just go in here. And uh, put up my radio and stuff. It's pretty easy to do because I actually have a nice Pelican case for this. And um, it's one of the few 
Um, I usually don't go for these large Pelican cases, but I did for my 705 for whatever reason. It's an option. I actually have another bag, a padded bag I can put this in. But um, I need to do what my buddy told me to do, which was glue in these surrounding pieces of this pick foam. Still haven't done that yet. <laughs> I need to do it. Here's the um, tuner. That's the matte tuner 705. Is it plus, I think? Um, and people ask me about this tuner all the time, and I think it's a great tuner. It's a, it's a good antenna tuner for the 705. It has its, uh, I ha I've written about this on qrpr.com, so if you just do a search for the MAT705 plus on qrpr.com, you'll see it, but it pairs really nicely with the 705. The only issue is it requires that you have the command cable connected up to it, so that means you really can't use it with any other radio other than the 705. And when you have the cable hooked up, it's on, and there's like a phantom load on it, basically. So if you have it hooked up all the time, then you're going to need to recharge the battery all the time. Um, if you don't, and you do like me, and you completely disconnect it, the battery lasts a long time in here. It'll last a year of occasional use, um, but you have to completely disconnect it. Okay, and I'll put this up in my pack, and um, we're about done here. It's been an awesome little cabin, actually. And uh, yeah, so uh, thank you uh, so much for uh, joining me here on what's turning into a really pretty day, actually. I think it's going to clear off here and uh, be a really nice, peaceful day. I think we're going to go do a, probably a hike, like I said, before we head back home to our wives and kids <laughs> and that kind of life. Uh, things go back in fast gear. It's been nice having things in really nice, slow, low gear uh, for this um, this weekend. So uh, thank you so much for joining me. As I always say, um, I really appreciate the support from Patreon and Coffee Fun supporters. You all make this possible for me to do this so frequently and um, share all these um, activation videos and field reports with you. Speaking of field reports, always look on qrpeer.com. Uh, there's always a link in the description below to my full field report for this activation where I give you more details about um, the park, more photos, gear links, all those things are in those field reports. And always, like I say, let's take care of one another out there. Until next time, seven threes.